What's up guys? Welcome back to our channel. Guess where we are today? You guys see all the traffic behind me? We're in the Orlando airport. We are going to Ohio. Yeah. We're gonna be doing three stops. Not one, not two, but three. We're super excited about this. The first one is a 400 gallon tank. It's a tank of, uh, actually we saw this in a Reef Hobbies magazine. We contacted the guy, we thought his tank was amazing. So we're gonna be seeing that. And then the other one is a tank that I saw on Instagram. So we're gonna be doing two today. And then I'm gonna be doing an aquascape on an 800 gallon tank tomorrow. So follow me along for the ride. Let's do this. Right, guys we just made it to the first stop 400 gallon tank we're super super excited i was looking at the magazine i was looking at the pictures his name is brad blankenship uh we expect to see something very nice we landed in cincinnati ohio about three hours ago we ate some lunch like you guys seen we drove over two hours we're all the way in columbus ohio now we have another stop later but for now let's go see this tank i'm super excited let's go don't forget throughout this video we're gonna hide an egg of casper not the real Casper, because they don't have a Casper here, but if you see a little Casper swimming around, floating around, first one to send us a DM on Instagram, gets a swag pack with a t-shirt and a couple stickers. First one to send us a DM. Hopefully you can find it. Where do we start? I mean, first thing I gotta tell you guys, the tank looks phenomenal. One of the nicest reef tanks I've ever seen. What's cool to see is just how big everything is, how large these colonies are. I mean, mainly SPS with a couple of PS and a couple of softies on the front. Mm -hmm. So what are the dimensions? I want to say it's eight feet? It's 80 inches okay. by 40 inches uh, by 36 high. So let me start with some of the questions. How long you been in the hobby? I've been in the hobby for 30 years. And 30 years, 30 old years, old school. Started with halides, of course, and you know, just about four or five years ago, made the jump to LEDs. So I've been very happy with it so far. And yeah, the coloration is great. The growth has been just as great. So people will say you can't grow corals with LEDs and that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. We opened our facility four years ago and we don't use a single T5, a single metal highlight and everything mm -hmm. is just growing like crazy. Yeah. There's a few people on there and now they're saying that you need to go back to metal highlights. They're out of their mind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nothing wrong with metal highlights, I still love them. Right. But however, nothing that these lights cannot do, and the proof is in the pudding here. Well, my electric bill loves it a lot better, too. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> and the heat and all that. And the that, heat you know? and the AC and all of that, yeah. Cool. So, um, 30 years ago, and what was your first thing, you say? Um, it was a 29 gallon uh, T5 lighted, and it had a little. Um, no, it was VHO. I started with VHO. Old school. The old school, yeah. And then I moved into a corner tank. Uh, 90 gallon, it's downstairs still set up okay. and actually plumbed into this system. And um, 15 years ago, I upgraded to this tank, um, 400 gallons, custom made from a guy in Canada who actually sadly isn't making tanks anymore. But um, I really love my design because it's got the, the all the wave uh, action is built into this wall. I didn't want to see any plumbing. I wanted it to be clean. It's the nice peninsula. Clean. You can walk around all the sides. Let's start breaking the tank down. So I see you got mainly SPS on top. It's SPS and Euphelia predominantly. Those are my two loves. I love okay. Euphelia. I love SPS. I have to have an anemone for my clownfish. Um, I actually um, have raised several batches of, of the, the snowflake clownfish. That from, that's mom and dad right there yeah. in the uh, magnificent anemone. Um, yeah, I got corals from everybody. I've got lots of corals from you and gotcha. all around the world. You have any issues with that anemone there? Well, it, 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 it's always going to sting something, but when the corals get so big, it really doesn't do any damage and he stays put. He did, move, he he did move once when I changed the lights from halides to LEDs. He went walk about and I had to... He's like, okay, I don't like yeah, what you're doing. Yeah, I did the, all bit. the change lights. I had to kind of gather him up, but I put him right back in the spot I wanted him and he stayed ever since. I've been lucky. So I can't help it but to see this Sunset Montipora that is about, I want to say maybe 30 inches by 30 by, I mean, maybe even farther. Because if you want to get technical, it's growing all yeah. the way here, all the way down here. That's 15 so, years growth of Sunset Montipora. Um, and you have to be careful because it will grow over everything. So I have to kind of control it a little bit. I've gotten a couple corals that have kind of like 
I, I gave up on them. And what's funny, compared to the Rainbow Monty and the other mountain cross the Monty's like those, like the Mystic Sunset and other ones, yeah, yeah. that seems to be the slower one out of them. Okay, really? Yeah, but oh, it man. seems like once it gets super comfortable, it's a Monty Pour at the end it's of the gonna day, go. it's, just, it's gonna grow and grow and grow. I call it my volcano in the middle. I've got my anemone <laughs> poking out the top of the volcano. They're, they're kind of like keeping it at bay a little yeah, bit, Yeah, right? exactly. Slows it down. So, so the anemones kind of hold them in. So tell me a little bit about some of these cores. I recognize some of them. The one that I had to have in my tank, as I'm a big Steve Wiest uh, fan from way back when, was the Oregon Tort. And yeah. he had that really nice, beautiful blue Oregon Tort. So it had to be uh, like the centerpiece of my tank. So it, it went right in the center. Um, I've got lots of tenuous. I love millies. So I've got several, several nice millies. And like I said, I've got all kinds of torches because I mean, who doesn't love a, a nice flowy torch? Well, for some of the new people on the channel and the hobby, for those of you guys, Steve Wiz was a guy from mm -hmm. Oregon, I want to say 15 years ago or mm -hmm. so. At least, yeah. He had an 850 gallon tank and it, it, it was gorgeous. I mean, I still see pictures of it around on the internet. I actually got the pleasure to meet him. I met him in Magna in 2010 when Magna came to Orlando. Understood. So, um, Oregon tour over there. Uh, what kind of tenuous is this? Sexy Coral's Orange Passion. Wow, it's so huge and so happy right now. Yeah, it's grower and it, it's a, I mean, I frag it a lot. I mean, and actually the, the places that you can see the, the growth tips on the most are the places that I've fragged recently. And those are the ones that grow the fastest. The, after you cut it, it grows faster. Pink uh, Cadillac. Um, it's huge. Uh, that's the Vin. Uh, that's your yellow tip right there. Okay. Well, that yellow that tip. thing grows? Uh, honey, um, home wrecker, I mean. Uh, okay. Let's see what else. What is this beautiful Eternal Millie Flame, here? that's uh, Acid Trip. I love it. It is gorgeous. It's one of my favorite millies. Me and Josh were just talking about it. I've got day. a nice big piece of jolt. I've got uh, Bubble Bath Unicorn, uh, Paletta Tricolor back there. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. I, I am a collector at, at heart. I've not, oh, I, I can tell. I've I mean, never seen a frag I don't like. <laughs> I, I, I have a t-shirt that even says that, so. <laughs> I've never seen a frag I don't like. Yeah. I like that. So let's talk a little bit about equipment. Uh, do you, I see you got Orphic LED lights. F, uh, V4 LEDs, uh, the Icon, the new upgrade. I just upgraded those about a year ago to their newest version. And the growth has even been uh, fast. It was great before, but it's even faster now. And how long you been using Orphic? I've been using Orphic for, uh, since I started with LEDs, which was five years ago. So how many versions have you used? I'm my third version, I think. Your third version? Yeah. You happy with the quality and the I spread? I really and love it, and it's been uh, the spread is gorgeous. I mean, this is as much light as I was getting with three 400 watt halides, and uh, like electricity is a lot less. The heat's a whole lot less. The summertime, oh, yeah. the AC would run nonstop in this house. Trying to keep up with three Trying 400 watt halides. Trying to keep up with three. Yeah, it was, it was hard. So earlier you mentioned something about that you produce all the flow from back here. Yeah. So you if you remember, if you remember a long, long time ago, there was something called a Tunzi wave box. Yes, of course. And I loved it. I didn't even know they stopped making it. Yeah, they so stopped. You hide it back stopped there a long time ago, and I, but I wanted to upsize it. So when I designed the tank, I uh, designed it so that there would be intakes at the bottom and then two, you know outports for each side. So basically, there was two giant wave boxes, and they had giant stream pumps and then they were on a, um, a timer and they would pulse and then it would go back and forth. And, and with four large tonsy pumps, I would get a two inch wave on the tank. Too much. Too much. And so um, about a year after that, I, I decided I was gonna go to like a time system. So now gotcha. I never run more than two pumps at a time. Uh, it's just, it's too much flow. So talk to me about these jawbreaker mushrooms. They uh, look amazing. Uh, Paletti jawbreakers. And I love the variation. I mean, I started with one. 10 years ago uh, from a local hobbyist and it just exploded. I'm all the time collecting those and, and you know, selling them to frag swaps and, and doing that. I love how they get, they get all red, they get the green, they get purple in them. Yeah, that's when they're beautiful. If you can get the red, yeah. the green, and the purple out of yeah. it, it's amazing. Yeah. I see you got these big porites here plating all over. It's kind of weedy, right? It's it is going over. crazy. Um, yeah, so, and it, 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 the, this tank gets so much flow on that side. It's, I've tried put acros there. It, it actually is too much flow. Too much. Um, I so believe that. I, I kind of let a coral find its spot, you know? If it's, it's gonna tell me. If it looks unhappy, I'm gonna move it, so. So I'm sure you're dealing here with a lot of coral warfare. Obviously, we've Obviously, seen the shape yes. of the Sunset Montipora. Yes. It's not just how large it is, but it's actually killed a, a Stalophora coral, and it grew over the skeleton. So it's shaped like if it was a Stalophora, yeah. 
But it's sunset colors. But it's a sunset monty, so <laughs> don't get confused thinking that the sunset monty pore is growing that way. that way. No. It's just growing over the old skeleton. That's all there is. So what do you do here when you're dealing with a coral warfare, which is, is happening in the entire tank? I mean, you see this scroll here fighting for space. Yep. There's, uh, what is this here? That um, came from you, and I'd love to tell you to tell me what it is. Josh, I'm trying, because it's not getting light. Yeah, it's... it's oh, it. it's a samakura. It's a samakura. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, you know just, what it is? Just, it's a it, summer uh, core. It's a plate in summer core. Okay. Okay. It's a plate in summer yep. core. It's just the light. It's just got a little it, faded. It, it's the only thing that I've got that will take that that little bit of light. So it's a perfect core for that spot. And you can put it in really high light. It likes it too. Okay. You could put a nice liptoseries down there too. They yeah. love that low yeah. light. So when I've got to control my sunset, I use uh, calc paste. So take a little bit of water, or water, make a like a slurry. <laughs> so you don't frag it? Oh, the sunset? No. Why? <laughs> it, it's just, I have too much. One thing that I shouldn't have done, I'll tell you about a mistake that I made a long, long time ago. Um, my wife loves green star polyps. And I decided, hey, I would put some green star polyps in there. I have been trying for 10 years to get green star polyps out of my 400 gallon <laughs> tank. It's almost impossible. <laughs> so They I, just get too happy. It's too, it's too much. It's, they grow too fast and they cover up too much too many nice corals that, you know. But you know what I noticed, it's true what you say, star polyps grow too fast, but when, I would say 70% of corals, when they get super happy, they can become aggressive. I mean, look at the sun, look at the scroll, yeah. look at your torch, yeah. look at your, your porites, look at the mushrooms, yeah. look at a tenuous acropora. Isn't that just, ridiculous? It's so ridiculous. It's just, it's just huge, you know? Fish, I see the one I can't help but to look at the regal tank. Yeah, I love regal. How much is he picking at your corals? Not a bit. He's a, a red sea, true red, true red sea. Okay. And I have never seen him pick at a coral besides a zoanthid. You don't think he's picking because okay there's that. so much you just don't realize no, it? I, no, I, I would know. So I see you got a purple tang in there. Yeah, there's a mystery wrasse, two purple tangs. Um, uh, I've got a, a blue tang, fox a magnificent face. fox face. I love those for algae control. And, and then, of course, Red Sea Sail Fin Tanks, my absolute favorite fish for algae control. He's so aggressive, isn't he? They no? will take care of uh, bubble algae. They'll take care of any kind of trouble algae You know, I never got. heard somebody just be praising them for algae. Uh, oh, they are the best. Eating. To me, I love nasos. I love convicts for algae mm -hmm, eating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, the bristle tooth, especially the tomini. Right, right. Yellow eye coal, the, wh the white tail bristle white tooth, tails, this is yep. good. But yeah, I've never found an algae that uh, a good Red Sea sail fin won't take care of for me. No more reef tanks. We found the doggy. We found the doggy, right? You want to come with me? Come here. Come here. Come here. Say hi. Say hi, guys. His name is Chewbacca. Mwah. Got my fragging area. Okay, it looks like a kitchen. <laughs> oh, wow. And then the frag tanks. These are the ones you got to start reproducing. Yeah, those grow really nice for me right now. I'm having wow, a lot of success so with healthy. those. everything's so healthy. You're doing a great job, buddy. Thank you. So, Thank you. what is this, one system here? All of this is one system. Water comes from the main tank upstairs into my giant, giant skimmer oh, first. Oh, so upstairs and this is one system? All one system, all okay. together. Excellent, nice thing. And that's my, uh, my second frag, that's my second reef tank. That's my cornered acrylic that I've had for almost 25 years. I was going to say, the acrylic looks kind of old. <laughs> it's at least 25 years old. Wow. Oh, look at the size of that clam, looks beautiful. Uh, nice uh, gigas. I'm eventually gonna have to donate to a public aquarium because it's gonna outgrow that tank, obviously. Well, it's just getting too big, huh? It, well, not yet, but in a year or two, it's gonna be We're it's gonna be to huge. Gallon tanks in yeah, I'll send it to you. We'll give it a home. <laughs> okay, we got a four foot by two foot tank. And Which is divided into two. Yep. And That's all, for quarantine pro yep, purposes. Exactly, for and then all of, all of those torches that were in that quarantine tank out there were in this back tank. And okay. I was just, I needed some corals to put in there over there, so I moved those out. This is my, most of my newer stuff that I've collected over the last couple of years. Gotcha. Got prom queen. I saw something that I like a lot. What the heck is this? Uh, that is bubble bath unicorn. Bubble bath unicorn. I heard the name, but what is it, like a table? We have it? Yeah, we have it. Yeah, bubble bath unicorn. Yeah. Hi, right, what else do you have? I've got another little, little small tank over here. You're like a mad scientist, man. I you do have a lot of hobby tanks. going crazy. Yeah. I love to see people like you, you know. So many people do this just for the love of money. And if you can make money, great. If you can, but people all the time, they, they buy one frag, it grows into a two inch mini colony, and they make four frags and the thing never grows. 
it's nice to see that you got an abundance of these corals and you're not rushing them, you know? Well, I, I never will cut any of my acros until they get to be three, four inch colonies. Yeah. And that way I, I know that I can sustain it. So I see right here, you got your little I got station, the you got your little madness yep. that you can only understand. Yep, yep. No matter how much you try to read that, yeah, forget you it. have to be a mad scientist to even understand what's going on. You gotta have a sink in your fish room, of course. I see downstairs you got a calcium reactor. Mm -hmm, Is that all you dose? No, it's, it's not enough to keep up with as much you know demand as I have. So I've got two part, I use Bionic two part. Been using it for years. I love how it also raises the pH. Of the, of the overall aquarium water. It makes your corals grow a little faster that way. You ever had an issue trying to keep up with the numbers being out of whack by dozen or you got it down to a science? I, well, I, I keep the calcium reactor always at a steady, a steady pace and then all I ever change, I'll tweak the two part. And I just noticed I have an alcatronic that's downstairs that you know, sends me a text message four times a day on my alkalinity, which everybody knows is the most important. Yes. And then, so I just uh, tweak it from there. I can, I can be, a, you know, in Florida, on vacation and I, I'll get a, a text. So and basically I that thing is testing the alkalinity for you. Yeah, just text the alkalinity, I can tweak my two part and the tank always stays in that between nine, 9.4 range, DKH. Okay. And as far as food, what do you feed? I've got my own, uh, you know, homemade blend that a lot of people make with live clams and frozen oysters and frozen mussels and- All the goodies. All the good stuff and I, I feed that, you know, almost every night. Um, I feed spectrum pellets. Um, I've got some freeze-dried uh, mysis and copepods and things. And I actually throw it in that back box back there, the, the, my, my, my makeshift Tunzi boxes, yeah. and it actually shoots it out. And you know, freeze-dried never sinks, but if you shoot it out of a pump, it stays in the water column and the fish you know, like it that way. So I do freeze-dried once a day, pellets once a day, and usually frozen once a day. What about uh, water changes? I'm really lazy about water changes. How often you do them? Once every three months. Every three months? Yeah. What makes you decide that it's time to do it? If I notice a problem. If you say now it's time, like something just looks off a little bit. Yeah, a little bit off, and then I'll definitely do a, a nice 25% water change. If something ever gets really out of whack, I've been known to you know, do 50% water changes. What yeah. do you try to keep your nitrates at? My nitrates are very, very low. It's under five. I under do my five. under five and phosphates 0.03. Okay, so um, very, very low nutrients. Those are actually good numbers. I like it five, ten, no more than two. I, I would like to raise them up a little. Ten uses would get a little bit better color if I could it's keep them up. It's not easy, right? Yeah, it's not easy. I, I dump a lot of food in here as much as I possibly can without, you know, fouling the tank. And so, you know, uh, under five works for me. So. Do you dose uh, magnesium, iodine, uh, amino acids, anything like that? I, I do not at this time. Um, the calcium reactor takes care of the magnesium for the most part. Okay. Uh, you know, bounce the coral skeletons down, takes care of that. Um, yeah. And then repl I use replenish once a week. Um, that's like the really minor trace elements. So that's, that's a good, good one for color. Well, I think that covers it all, Brad. Um, Thank you for letting us come by. I appreciate you coming. Beautiful and tank. I'm super impressed. Thank you. If we ever come back to the area, I'd love to come check it out and of visit course, again. Of you know? course. I, I will always be back at your store whenever I'm in the area. So yeah, I love you're your more store. than welcome. We'll love give you a full store. tour and we're going to be sending you some frags, you know? Excellent. I think there's a few things that we have that I definitely love to see them grow here. Excellent. On the meantime, guys, thank you for following us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a like, leave a comment below. We'll see you guys soon.